you. Today I want to talk to you a little bit about some leadership lessons. Uh, a few years ago when I came home very late from one of my trips, uh, all the lights were off in the house and as I came into the house my wife was asleep in bed and I would quietly went and got ready for bed and, and as I went back and laid down in the bed when my head hit the pillow there was a little bit of a crinkle. I looked around and there was a note on the pillow. You know I'd been gone all week and I, I thought a love note from my wife. I mean probably you know talking about how much she missed me and I took the note, I went into the bathroom, and as I turned the note over, in fairly large print, it said, things you can do to not get divorced. <laughs> Th this is not a love note, all right? So as I opened the note, there's a list of things that I could do, and it's a fairly long list, and at the top of the list, it said, clean your office. Well, I went to bed that night, I woke up early in the morning, and I headed to my office. I cleaned till 2 o'clock in the afternoon, and it was spotless. Anyone would be proud of the office that I had. At that point, I got out the list again. And as I looked down to the list, I came to a very awful realization. I was never going to make it through the list. Do you have a list? Well, most of us do. And most of us, I think, have that same struggle that we're never going to make it through the list. Yeah, you know, there's too many things to do and not enough time to do it in. Well, most of us, what we do when we face that dilemma is we prioritize. And I thought I'd done a very good job of that. After all, I worked on the number one item, clean your office. So through the years, cleaning the office is usually been a top priority issue for my wife. But as I've observed that particular issue, I've come to a conclusion. It has almost nothing to do with the quality of our marriage. My office can be dirty and our, our marriage can be great. My office can be clean and my wife can be frustrated. Even though it feels like it's number one, there's some other things that are clearly more important. The dilemma for all of us is some things, that th some things that we think are very important oftentimes aren't when we really look at how they affect people. The first insight has to do with focusing on the things that make the biggest difference. And what I had to do to understand that was to look at some data and, and look at what kinds of things really affected my wife. When Jack Zinger and I got together, the first thing we did is we wanted to know which leadership behaviors made the biggest difference. So we collected data from hundreds of thousands of assessments of thousands of leaders. We had over 2,000 items or behavioral descriptions of leaders. And as we looked at all those items, we did statistical analysis to say what do the best leaders do and what do the worst leaders do. And what we found is, is that some of those items separated a lot, they differentiated a lot, and they really gave us some clues into which leadership behaviors mattered the most. Again, we were fooled by our own intuition. I'd always thought that being on time to meetings was a very important characteristic. Turns out that when we looked at the data, we found that the best leaders had the same score as the worst leaders on being on time to meetings. So you can all relax now when you're late. Great leaders are sometimes late and they're sometimes early. While that one didn't differentiate, there were 16 behaviors that were highly significant. And these 16 behaviors were a guide to us at helping leaders understand the difference between being great and being good. Focusing on these behaviors made an enormous difference in a leader's ability to be successful. Now, typically when we help leaders to improve, we measure them on these behaviors. Occasionally, people get some very low scores on some of those behaviors or maybe even one of those behaviors. 
Now, we call this low score a fatal flaw. And it's different than a weakness. Let me ask you a question. How many of you here have something that you may consider or others might consider a weakness? Any, anybody? Oh, everyone's raising their hands. What a surprise. We all have weaknesses, right? But there's a difference between a weakness and a fatal flaw. You need to pay attention to fatal flaws. Let me show the impact of having a fatal flaw. People with a fatal flaw, their average effectiveness rating was the 18th percentile. This negative trait really sunk them in terms of their effectiveness. And the advice we give to leaders if they have a fatal flaw is you need to fix it. You don't need to turn it into a profound strength, but you need to take it out of that danger zone.